Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you to the Bible story today in Jesus' name. I'm so happy that our coordinators have made a great effort. I can see that uh, there are some new faces among us in the Bible study today. Those of you who have not been coming regularly, we're so happy you are here. Are you there? Can you wave your hand at me? You are coming for the first time today to the Bible study since we started this series. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand? Wave it at me. Wonderful. God bless you. Now, I'm smiling at you because you came today. Uh, so let me smile next time. You're here? Uh, so we must keep coming. And those of us who have been faithful, let's keep on inviting others. We're having a series of studies that we cannot afford to miss uh, in the church. And our coordinators, I praise the Lord for you. And I thank God for what you're doing with the transport officers and all the workers involved, bringing the people here. Let's uh, put more effort and make sure that people come to attend the Monday Bible study regularly. And as God blesses them, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes for prayers. We'll begin the study today. Our Father, we thank you very much for our Bible study today. Thank you for this series you are getting us through. We're praying, oh Lord, that today you'll open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that your promises will be yes and amen in our lives. And all the terms and all the conditions you want us to fulfill before those promises can be ours. We are praying, O oh Lord, you grant us the grace and the strength and the faith as well, the determination and the conviction to carry on and carry through in those conditions and fulfill them so that your promises will be ours in Jesus' name. Help us tonight as we study your word. Help us and give us understanding in the word. Help us, Lord, to stand firm on this sure foundation on the word of the word, which can never be moved. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. As you look at the outline today, you will see that we are going through chapters 2 and 3. Already we have studied chapter 2, and we have studied chapter 3. But if you are very, very observant, there is a part of every message we have left out. And we left it out until this time. And that is a part containing the promises of Christ to the overcomers. Christ's promise to the overcomers. In every church that Jesus Christ spoke to, he gave them, first of all, he introduced himself. And then he described the condition of that church. And he always said, I know your works. I know your activities. I know your conviction. I know the things I can commend you for. I also know the things that I need to condemn you for. That I need to reprove you for. That I need to correct in your life. And then after he has said that, the commendation, the condemnation, then the counsel. He'll give them counseling. He'll give them a command. And then after that, he'll finish up with a promise. He did that in every one of those churches. Telling the overcomers that once they overcome, here is what he was going to do for them. In chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh. I will grant, I will give to each of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And then you go to verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, and, and that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Again, it says, he that overcometh. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And then he tells us in verse 17, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to each of the hidden manner. I will give him a white stone in the stone, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving except he that receiveth it. From verse 25, but that which thou hast, that which ye have 
already. Hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him I will give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Then in chapter 3, verse 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He tells us in verse 9, he says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the watch of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown him that overcome it will i make a pillar in the in the temple of my god and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my father of my god and the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god and i will write upon him my new name he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches verse 21 to him that overcometh will i grind to sit with me in my in my throne even as i also overcame and i am set down with my father in his throne he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches You'll see very clearly that each epistle, each message from Christ to the churches ends with a promise for the overcomers. Not for everybody. Not for every churchgoer. Not for everyone carrying the Bible. Not for everyone mentioning the name of Christ. But only for the overcomers. He was very careful to underline and to outline the people he was making the promises to. He that overcometh. He that overcometh every time. It promised as has been given not only to the overcomers of that church that particular church but to all overcomers in every age in every generation all overcomers in all churches from the foundation of the church the beginning of the church until christ returns that's why he attaches every promise to he that has an ear every individual he that has an ear every family he that has an ear in every church in every location in every age until christ will come let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches the condition of inheriting the promises is the same for all periods of time, for all believers, all believers in ancient times and in these modern times, until the very end of time, the unchanging Christ does not vary his requirements or his terms or his conditions or different churches in different places at different times. It remains constant. You will see then that the, the promises of God are conditional. They, they've always been like that, conditional. The conditions of the promises of God are very clear in the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 7. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, I'm reading to you from verse 9. I'm showing you that the promises of God are always conditional. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Know therefore... That the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. That's a condition. With them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. He's saying from one generation to the other, generation to the other, generation to the other, unto a thousand generations, I will not change. My promises will always be conditional. As it was at the beginning, so you find at the end that when Jesus Christ gave those promises out, those promises were conditional. Psalm 103. In Psalm 103, verses 17 and 18, conditions attached to the promises of the Lord. Psalm 103, verse 17, but the mercy of the Lord. 
is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. You see that? The promises of God, the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the hand of God is for them for good from everlasting to everlasting on this one condition upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. So then you will see that we cannot just jump into the Bible and say, I claim the promises of God. You cannot claim them except you are fulfilling the promises of the Lord. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ, in giving the promises to those churches and to all churches, he said, to him that overcomes, to him that overcomes. Every time, Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 11, and we desire... That every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It says you have to do something. There's a condition to fulfill. There are terms you have to fulfill. If you're going to inherit the promises of the Lord, you will show full assurance to the very end. In other words, be an overcomer. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That's a condition. For he is faithful, that promise. Yes, he's faithful. Yes, he's powerful. Yes, it's able. Yes, it's mighty. But you need to hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering. Verse 35, cast not away. Therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. You'll do the will of God. You'll stay in the will of God. You'll accept the will of God. You'll cherish the will of God. You'll practice the will of God. Then you will inherit the promises. Then he tells us in verse 37, For yet a little while, and he that shall come shall will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. I will not be able to fulfill the promises for him if he draws back. In Joshua, Joshua chapter 23. In Joshua chapter 23, Joshua was about to leave the children of Israel. And he was telling them and showing them of the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. As he revealed to them the faithfulness of God, he also reminded them that those, the faithfulness of God, the fulfillment of the promise of God is conditional. Conditional. Joshua chapter 23 verse 8. But cleave unto the Lord your God as ye have done unto this day. For the Lord has driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man has been able to stand before you. Unto this day, one man of you shall chase a thousand. What a promise, great promise. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you, as he has promised you. Take good heed, therefore. Take good heed, therefore. You see the promise he gave in verse 10, and then immediately he said, uh -uh, don't become careless and say, God will make our enemies to fall before us. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. The conditions are there. Else, if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages for them, and go in unto them, and, and they to you know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. But they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from all this good land which the Lord your God has given you. And behold, this day I am, I am going the way of all the earth, and ye know in all your hearts and all your souls that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you. Not one thing has failed thereof. Therefore, it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, 
so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he has destroyed you from all this good land which the Lord your God has given you. He was warning them. Then he said, when ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from all the good land which he has given you. You see that all the ministers of God in Bible days were very, very faithful. As to telling the people of God, the conditions are there. The terms are there. Yes, God is a faithful God. And he gives us wonderful promises. But then we must live righteously, holily, and be faithful unto the Lord and keep his word. You will see that you will come back to Revelation. Revelation chapters 2 and 3. Each message closes with, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Christ, at the end of each message to each church, calls the attention of each individual, of each family, of each Christian, of each local church, everyone everywhere. He calls the attention of everyone to consider the message so that we'll be overcomers and thus become partakers of the promised eternal blessings. The message to each church was not limited to that church. That's why it says, what the Spirit says. That's in the present tense. He continues to say that same thing unto the churches. You'll notice that in the first three messages that to the churches, he that has an ear, let him hear, was followed by he that overcometh. As you come to the last four churches, he that overcometh comes first. And then is followed by he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. To be an overcomer, each one must hear. Each one must decide to be obedient. And each one must decide to stand for the truth before he can prevail, before he can conquer. We come to the study itself. There are three points we're going to consider in the study. Point number one, proper perspectives of an overcoming character. Uh, what does it mean to overcome? Who is an overcomer? How do you recognize an overcomer? If you are an overcomer, how would you know? If your neighbor, your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, if they are overcomers, how would we know? Point number one, the proper perspectives of an overcoming character. Number two, prevailing power of overcoming Christians. Before we can overcome, when there's a conflict, when there's a battle, before you can prevail, before you can conquer the enemy, before you can conquer the difficulties, before you can overcome, there must be some power within you that makes you to prevail, prevailing power of overcoming Christians. Then number three, promised paradise for overcomers and conquerors. Promised paradise for overcomers and conquerors. Let's come back to number one. Proper perspectives of an overcoming character. And we look at chapter 2 of Revelation. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, open your Bible as we read together. It says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. Will I give to each of the tree of life which is in the, in the midst of the paradise of God. I've read all the references to you in chapters 2 and 3, and you have seen that the Lord addressed the promises to the ones that overcome. Turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. He that overcometh, again it's to the overcomer, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son, the overcomer. When the Lord said, he that overcometh, what do you think that means? Well, if you reason a little, you'll understand. Because in talking to the church in Ephesus, he said, I have this for your credit. You've done well that you have not allowed the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And then he says, he that overcometh. If you keep on overcoming that and you do not succumb and you do not yield and you do not fall for the false doctrine of the false prophets, you are an overcomer. I will give you of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Then you said, but I have something against you. You have left, you have left your first love. Remember where you are falling and regain, recover, rediscover that first love. Who is an overcomer then? The overcomer is the one that realizes 
I've lost my first love. I've lost my first conviction. I've lost my first zeal. And he goes back to the Lord and he regains and recovers and is restored to the first love. That's the overcomer. Therefore, the overcomer is the one that triumphs. The overcomer is the one that conquers. Is the one that conquers all evil doctrines and false doctrines. And you know that Jesus said himself that in the latter days that it will be a time when false prophets and false Christ shall arise. They are almost on every street. They are almost in every district. And you will find them if they come to you and you overcome. And they don't deceive you. And you're still on top. And you still keep the conviction of the word of God without yielding to the false doctrine of Balaam and of the Nicolaitans. Then you're an overcomer. If you don't sleep, if you're not lethargic, if you're not lukewarm, if you don't lose your first love, if the false fire of the love of God is still burning in your heart, and they, even though the love of many is waxing cold, your love does not wax cold, that's the overcomer. That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, if you keep that love until the end, that conviction until the end, that courage until the end, that stand until the end, and you keep that love until the end, then you are an overcomer, and I'll give my promise unto you. Not only that, he tells the church's manner, he said, I know what you are going through. I know what the synagogue of Satan, those people putting pressure on you, I know what they are saying. I know what they are doing to you. If you overcome, they are putting pressure on you. They are persecuting you so that you will fall, so that you will let down, so that you will become careless, so that you will compromise. If you do not compromise in spite of the persecution and you remain faithful unto the end, that's the overcomer. My promise is for you. If you hold on to the truth in spite of the pressures coming from Satan and his agents, then you are free from the influence of fleshly laws. Then you are an overcomer. Don't you know what he was saying to the church in Tatira? He was saying, you have that woman there, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and is seducing my servants to commit fornication and i gave her space to repent and she will not repent i'm coming soon and when i come i'm going to cast her and all the people that are committing multi with her into the bed of affliction unless they repent who is an overcomer in the church in Tyra? the one that will not be deceived by jezebel that the worldliness of jezebel the painting of jezebel the jewelry of jezebel will not attract will not influence and will still remain true to what she had always known what he had always known and jezebel will not have any influence any impact upon him upon her that's the overcomer that is the person who keeps himself from all the depths of satan because jesus said to that church he said to you the rest of you in Tatira, I put no other burden on you. Only this, that you make yourself free from the depths of Satan as they speak. That means then the people that are not, they are not going to investigate what the occultic people are saying. They are not investigating what the diabolical forces of Satan, what they are all about, what the mysteries of the devil, what's all about. They keep themselves free from occultism. And from all the evil things of the world. Those are the overcomers. And Jesus said, you'll hold fast. My works unto the end. The people that they keep steady. He knew, some, knew something is flying in one corner. Uh, they keep themselves free from it. Another ministry has started. They don't look that direction. They keep the word of God, the doctrine of the Bible, and the works of the Lord unto the very end. Those are the overcomers. As we look at the message of the Lord to the churches, he was telling the church in, uh, the church in Sardis, he said, you have a few names there. The people that have not defiled their garments. When he then said, those that overcome, who are the people that overcome? They are those that keep their garments pure and white. The robe of righteousness, the garment of salvation, and they do not lose their salvation, and they keep steady, and they and they're purified from day to day, and they have been sanctified, but they are made holy in the blood of the Lamb day to day, and they keep the righteousness of the saints and the holiness of the people of God. They don't go to the right, they don't bend to the left, they are just going straight, and they focus their eyes onto Jesus, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the price that was laid before him, he endured the cross. The people that endure like the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will not look right or left. 
saved and he keep on obeying the Lord faithfully unto the very end. Those are the overcomers. As he spoke to the next church, uh, the church in Philadelphia, what was he telling them? He was telling them that those were the people that although the Jews had come before them and they had been deceiving them, but he said, I'm going to make them to come before you and they will bow before you. They will know that I have loved you. But he also challenged them that they must keep that name, the name of the Lord. They have been faithful. They have a little strength and they did not deny the name of the Lord. Who are the overcomers there? The people that will not deny the name of the Lord. Persecution will come. Pressure will come. Opposition will come. False prophets will challenge you. But you still keep on that word and you will not deny the doctrine. You will not deny the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the overcomers. How about the, in the church um, in Laodicea? Who are the overcomers there? Well, the overcomers will be the people that come out of their lukewarmness. They have been cold. They have been lukewarm. And then they realize, I cannot continue like this. Because Jesus said, if you continue like that, I will spew you out of my mouth. And therefore they wake up. Because he said, be zealous therefore and repent. And so they repent. And they come to the Lord. And they get the fire from the altar once again. And the fire comes upon their hearts. And they are hot for the Lord. And they are zealous for the Lord. And they overcome the coldness and the lukewarmness. And they are now running for the Lord. They have waited upon the Lord. He that waits upon the Lord shall renew strain. He shall run, he shall not be weary. He'll mount up with wings as eagles. He'll walk and he will not faint. Those are the people that overcome. The people that overcome are not just the bench warmers. They're not just the people that come to church. They're not just the people that carry the name of Jesus. They're the people that do something and they get on their knees and they get on their faces before the Lord and fiery conviction comes to them. Burning conviction comes to them. The zeal of the Lord consumes them. Those are the people that are overcomers. You see the explanation of Jesus Christ himself in John chapter 16. John Chapter 16, I'm reading to you from verse 33. John 16, verse 33. The overcomers. See what Jesus said. He said, these things are spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Christ overcame the world. How did he overcome the world? He overcame all the temptations that the Satan brought to him in the world. That's how to overcome. He overcame all that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were planning against him. He overcame. He overcame all the discouragement that, you know, even his uh, relatives uh, in the flesh that they were putting upon him. He could have been discouraged. He overcame even all the little faith and the small faith and the no faith of his disciples. He overcame even what uh, Judas Iscariot did, what everybody around him did, all that did not deter him. All that did not make him to deviate, did not divert him from the narrow road that he came to follow. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is good as we go that we know that the way of the cross leads home. And Jesus Christ overcame. And he said, not my will, but thine be done. And Jesus said, if you overcome, as I have overcome, Pharisees will come to you. Sadducees will come to you. Even so-called Christians, disciples, they will come to you. They say, your own is too much. Your praying is too much. Your consecration is too much. Your devotion is too much. Your obedience to the Lord is too much. The sacrifice, the price you are paying uh, to get souls into the kingdom is too much. Slow down and uh, make the thing sort a little bit. Uh, your, your wife is uh, feeling inconvenient about your Christian stand. Listen to people. Your relatives will talk to you. But if you overcome, as Jesus overcame, then that is what it means. That the pro proper perspective of an overcomer. Look at it. Look at what Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3 verse 21. Revelation chapter 3 verse 21. To him that overcometh, will I grind to seed with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame, even as I overcame Satan, you overcome Satan. Even as I overcame all the temptations, you overcome all your temptations. Even as I overcame all the discouragements of the unbelievers, and you overcome all the discouragements of the unbelievers. Even as I overcame, even at the point of the cross, and they were saying, come down, if you are the son of God, I will believe you. I overcame their insult. I overcame their jesting. 
overcame all the things they were trying to throw at me. I remain in the center of the will of God. That's what the Lord is telling you, that if you will overcome, as he overcame, everything that comes against you, then he will give you the promises that we're reading about in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. In First John chapter 5, First John chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 4. It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Overcome the world. What does that mean? Well, you everything in the world that is not of God. All their methods, all their jewelry, all their painting, all their cosmetics, all their worldliness all their kind of dressing, all their pornography, all their sinful ways, overcome everything. He whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. There is evil in the world. But you will not allow the evil in the world to overcome you. That's what it means. He that overcometh. In Romans chapter 12 verse 21. Romans chapter 12 verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You know what that means? There's hatred and wickedness in the world. And sometimes when it throws its stone at you, and that thing hits you, and pains you. If you are not careful, you allow their hatred to overcome you. Say, okay, you do that to me, I'll do it to you too. Your revenge, your retaliate. If you retaliate, they overcome you. If you don't retaliate, you overcome. If they show anger at you, and they're furious at you, and they speak angry words at you, if you reply them with angry words, the sin has overcome you. Anger has overcome you. Hatred has overcome you. If you don't reply in anger, and you are calm, and you are loving, and you are forgiving, and you are gentle, and you are good to them, then you have overcome their anger and their wickedness. That's what he's saying. Those are the overcomers. But if you are saying, they did it to me, I'll do it to them. Those who are doing it to you, they are not thinking about heaven. Those who are doing it to you, they are not thinking about the promise of God. Those who are doing it to you, they are not thinking about sanctification or holiness. They are only thinking about themselves. And they want to get whatever they can get out of you. Whether they get it by crook, by whatever method, by hatred, by wickedness, they don't care. But you care because you want to go to heaven. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. We're looking at chapter 6 of Romans. Romans chapter 6. I'm reading to you from verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield your, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Those are, those are the overcomers. When sin does not have dominion over you. Uh, the kind of sins you have been committing before you are born again. Now you are born again. Now you are a child of God. The temptation to fornication will come, but you don't allow it to overcome you. The temptation to wickedness will come. You don't allow it to have any part in your life. The temptation to covetousness that used to be there. You see this, you want to get it. You see that, you want to get it. The temptation will still come. But you do not allow that temptation of covetousness, which was there when you were not born again. You don't allow it to come back again and to overcome you and to floor you and to put your back on the floor to defeat you. Uh, the, the, uh, the temptation to be envious and jealous. Somebody else has had some Thing. And that was a major problem before you were born again. Envy and jealousy. But now, you are born again. The temptation will come again. You don't allow it to overcome you. You overcome it. You defeat it. You stamp it down. And say no jealousy in my life again. No envy in my life again. That is it. The temptation to keep on committing abortion. Or to kill. Or to murder. Either to murder to kill with your pen. Or to kill with a knife. 
or to kill with a gun, or to kill with your mouth, or to slander people and crush them and slash them to pieces, the temptation will be there when you see other people gossiping and backbiting. But you don't yield to that temptation. You overcome. That's what it means. And all the things that, you know, might come your way as temptation, you say, no, by the grace of God, I'm going to be an overcomer. Because I don't know when my Lord Jesus will come. And when he comes, I want him to find me and overcomer in Romans chapter 8 we're looking at uh, what is uh, some things that will happen in the life of a believer and these things may come to you like a barrage in 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 quick quick succession and yet you do not allow them no matter when they come how they come and uh, how many of them may come you do not allow them to make you give up that you'll say no I can't serve the Lord again because if you say I cannot serve the Lord again you are defeated you are conquered but if you keep on serving God in spite of it all whatever may be happening to you that is the overcomer Romans chapter 8 reading from verse 35 who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword do some of those things may come tribulation trial, trouble. And there will be some people that are agents of Satan. Although they come to church, they'll come to you and they'll say, ah, sister, how is all this happening to you? All this trouble, all this trial, all this tribulation. And you say you are serving the Lord. Why don't you look for another way? Look for another church. If you look for another church and you say, well, I cannot bear this anymore, then you, you are falling. Then you are defeated. But if you say, oh no, this doesn't matter. Tribulation, this is even small. Let distress come. Let persecution come. Let farming come. Let nakedness come. Joblessness, let it come. Peril, I'm waiting. A sword, I'm waiting. When you are able to take your stand like that, then you are an overcomer. In verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. They have not even killed us. And they have not even, uh, they have not even, they have not slapped us, they have not done anything. All they are doing is, you know, just this uh, little, little persecution that we have with our landlord, little persecution we have with our co-tenants, little persecution of those who are singing proverbial songs against us. And, you know, that's, those are the little, little things. It says, even if for thy sake... We're killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us when persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Those are the overcomers. Those are the overcomers. If you can talk like that, if you can stand like that, if you can pray like that, if you can take your stand like that, that's the overcomer. And this is the proper perspective the Lord is giving us concerning who the overcomers are. First Corinthians chapter 9. In First Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading to you from verse 27. But I keep my body under. I keep under my body. Here is Paul the apostle. He knew that being an apostle does not automatically qualify you for heaven. Being a preacher doesn't automatically qualify you for heaven. You must be an overcomer. Coming to Deep Alive Bible Church doesn't automatically qualify you to be an overcomer. You must still put your body under, your tongue under, your eyes under, your ears under control. It's not everything they say. It's not every gossip that flies around. You listen to, you put your body under, you put your feet under control. It's not every place you desire. I want to go there. I want to go there. That you will go. You put it under. And you put your eyes under. It's not every magazine you read. It's not every preacher in the magazine you'll be looking on and gazing at and, and looking at the contour and the anatomy of everything there. You put your body under. That's the overcomer. But I keep under my body. And bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a cast away. And you will see as we have looked into the word of God, what it means to, to be an overcomer. And you will see what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying when it repeated it seven times over, to him that overcometh, to him that overcometh. But how do they overcome? Those people, what power do they have? 
What authority do they have? What Christian quality characteristic do they have that makes them to overcome? Look at that in point number two. Prevailing power of overcoming Christians. The prevailing power of overcoming Christians. How do they overcome? Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 9. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. Here is the point. How they overcame? And they overcame him. And they overcame him. And they, the redeemed of the Lord, they, the overcomers, they, the people that now are in glory, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. It says, they overcame number one, by the blood of the Lamb, the power in the blood, the power in the blood, the soul cleansing power in the blood of the Lamb, the, the soul covering power in the blood of the Lamb, the energy, divine energy that comes out of the blood of the Lamb, they relied on that blood of the Lamb. That their security, their salvation, and their righteousness is through the blood of the Lamb. That's number one. And then by the word of their testimony. They looked at the word of God, the promises of God. They claimed the promises of God. They personalized the promises of God. No, I will not fall. No, I will not yield to the devil. Greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. The Lord has lifted me up. He has made me to see together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then the power of the Holy Ghost is with me. And with the Holy Ghost assisting me, the comforter and my strengthener, I will not fall by the word of their testimony. And he kept on confessing positively, confessing the promises of God for them. That's how they overcame. And then he said it loved not their lives unto the death. That means they didn't care for physical suffering. They didn't care for physical inconvenience. They didn't care for, you know, all the little, little pains were bare. They didn't care for any of those things. They didn't say, oh, you see, because of this pain now, if I uh, see me, I've been praying, I didn't get healed, I didn't want to go to the abalis before, but uh, sh should I die now? What will I say? I'm still not uh, 60 years of age. If I die now, anywhere I will go to the abalis. Uh, whatever happens there, when I get well, I will seek the face of the Lord again then then you are defeated. Then you are falling. Then you are backsliding. And your name is out of the book of life. But the people that will say death, uh -uh, death will come one day. If I die, I die in Christ. That is wonderful. They loved not their lives unto the death. Those are the people that are overcomers. It tells us as we come back to Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. I know thy works and where Satan dwelleth, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name. Thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. That he is this Antipas when the persecution was becoming greater and greater and greater and the persecution was increasing in its intensity. And it appeared that death was coming. He was still just saying, he was standing firm. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. There is a race I must run. There are victories to be won. Keep me true with your power. Every hour, keep me true. Those are the people, the people that are just praying to the Lord. Lord, the heat is coming on. The heat is getting greater. The difficulties are increasing. But keep me true. Help me. Whatever this will result to, help me not to deny you. Help me not to deny your name. The people that pray, the people that rely on the Lord, the people that will not look at themselves, but they are looking unto the Lord, who is strengthening them every time. Those are the people that overcome. In chapter 3, verse 9. Chapter 3, verse 9, it tells us, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast, hast kept the word of my patience. 
patience, the word of my patience, the word of my patience, the devil will be coming. Uh, if you don't do something, uh, hurry up and do something, you're going to perish. You're going to die. You'll not have anybody to marry. You'll not get any job. If you don't do what the other people are doing, if you don't give bribe, if you don't uh, pour down water so you can step on wet ground, you'll never be able to make it. You better hurry up. You better hurry up. This patience, patience, patience. If you stay there, the world is not like that anymore. If you're waiting, the world is rushing on. But they are calm in their soul. And they are just looking, waiting for the Lord. That Lord, you are the one that orders and directs the steps of a righteous man. And I'm going to wait for you. It may take one more year. It may take two more years or even three more years. It doesn't matter. You have kept the word of my patience. Without patience, you cannot overcome. Because everything will not come the moment, the minute, the hour you want it to come. Everything will not just fall into place. Every time you want it to fall into place. Without patience in your life, you will not be an overcomer. Here is the power. Here is the authority. Here is the secret of the people that overcome. They leave everything in the hands of the Lord. Therefore the Lord said in verse 10, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. The things that make people of God, the people of God to overcome. In First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, reading from verse 12, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you uh, for his name's sake. When your sins are forgiven and there is no guilt and there is no condemnation, no condemnation now to them that walk in the spirit who are not in the flesh, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made them free from the law of death and of sin. The people that have assurance that their sins are forgiven, no condemnation, weighs them down. Those are the people that overcome because if you're having internal conflict, if you're having guilt, condemnation for something that you have done and temptation comes at you, at that moment, you'll be shaking because you are fighting an internal battle and now an outside battle, outward battle also comes, you'll not be able to overcome. But when you are calm in your soul, when you are peaceful in your soul, when you know there is no sin, when you know there is nothing between you and the Lord, that you are in good fellowship, in good terms with the Lord, you will be an overcomer. In verse 13, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning, when you know the Lord, you'll be an overcomer. When you know him that's from the beginning, that you know the history of the children of Israel, you know the history of Abraham, you know the covenant of God with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob, and you know the story of Joseph, and you know God to the point that he never disappointed any of his children any day. That confidence is there. That faith is there. That stability is there. You have known him that is from the beginning. You'll be an overcomer. I write unto you, young men, because you you have overcome the wicked one. The wicked one. That's the devil. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I've written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I've written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you. When the word of God abides in you, and it's like, it's like something that is rolled up there. Any situation that comes, the word of God will just come out. You'll just remember the word of God. Like Jesus Christ. When the devil came from the first angle, the devil just came and said, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to become bread. Jesus just brought the word out. It is reaching. And the devil was defeated. And then he took him up to a high mountain and he said, if you are the son of God, you cast yourself down. And Jesus said again, it is reaching and then the devil fell flat again. Then he recollected himself and he said, all right now, all these kingdoms of the world have been given unto me in my hand. If you bow down to me, I'll give everything to you. And Jesus said again, it is reaching. When the word of God abides in you, you'll be an overcomer. That's the secret of being an overcomer. It says in verse 14, I've reached unto you young men. Because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. That's how we overcome, and then he tells us, if you want to keep on overcoming, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. But the, and the world passes away, and the lust thereof. 
but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. My brothers and sisters, that's how to overcome. When you have uh, the weapons of prayer, the weapons of uh, the word of God, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter ten, reading from verse four, it tells us in verse four, for the weapons of our fear are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh, your interest is that Christ lives within you. And everything within, everything around, must be obedient to Christ. And therefore, anything that comes from the devil, anything that comes from the agents of Satan, you have the spiritual weapon, the word of God, the promise of God, the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost, and you rely upon the Lord, and you bring everything to subjection, even to the subjection of the name of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. Whatever they are, kingdoms or whatever, you subdue them because of the faith you have in God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness they were made strong. That is, in themselves, ordinarily. They were weak. But when they came into the Lord and he put on the armor of the Lord, they just suddenly became very strong. They were valiant in fight and he turned to flight the armies of the aliens. You say, can, can you have such weapons that these people had? Can you have such armor that these people had? Yes, you can. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When you come to the Bible study here, uh, that should be your aim. I want to be strong in the Lord. Whatever I will face during the week, whatever will happen to me during the week, I want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Well, put on the whole armor of God. Not some, everything. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil against the strategies of the devil, against the ploys and the plans of the devil, put on the whole armor of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith. Take the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's not ended. Praying always. Praying always. If you have all those armors on, and then you are not praying, you hear the word of God, you know the word of God, and everything looks okay, you know everything on the outline, but there's no prayer, you will not overcome. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Do you see what the Lord is telling us, the overcoming Christian? Number one, he has Christ within him. He has the grace of God within him because an empty bag cannot stand upright. If you don't have something inside, you will not be able to stand. Every wind that blows, every storm that comes will blow you down, will overcome you. But when you have Christ within and the grace of God within, you have unwavering faith in Christ's power to keep you. And you have unwavering faith in his unfailing promises. That's how you stand. That's how you overcome. His promises, his spiritual strength is obtained. That is, the overcoming Christian, he obtains his spiritual strength. He maintains his spiritual strength. He increases his spiritual strength by constant prayer and dependence on God, and dependence upon the word of God. He is conscious of the presence of Christ with him all the time, and he lives with the courage and conviction of one who is in partnership with the mighty conqueror, the captain of our salvation. The overcoming Christian does not depend on his own natural strength. 
He does not depend upon his own human wisdom. Human wisdom alone, the greater one, lives within him. The unconquerable Christ lives within him and supplies sufficient grace and power as the need arises. That's the reason of his constant victory. The weapons of his warfare will not be carnal weapon, but it will be mighty through God. Because of that, he's able to pull down the strongholds and is able to overcome every high thing exalting itself against the knowledge of God with the whole armor of God constantly on him, fighting the good fight of faith with faith and vigilance, standing firm without wavering and praying without ceasing, determining to keep the victory and striving against sin in the name of the Lord with the word of God and with the power of the Holy Ghost within him. That's how that overcoming Christian keeps his daily victory and his lifetime triumph. Let's look at First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. It says, ye of God little children and have overcome them. It's not how old we are. Whether we're young or old, little children, you have overcome them. How? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that's the reason that overcoming Christians, they prevail. That's the power that they have. I come to point number three. The promised paradise for overcomers and conquerors. As you look at the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ to these churches, look at this. It tells us what the overcoming Christians are going to have. The promised paradise to overcomers and conquerors. In chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Adam and Eve did not overcome. They were driven out. And they couldn't take of the fruit of the tree of life. But now, if you will overcome, Satan went to them in the form of a serpent. But they didn't overcome. And they, fe they fell flat. And they failed God. And they disobeyed God. And they sinned against God. Therefore, they were not able to take of the tree of life. But now, if Satan comes to you, and he tempts you, and you overcome, it says, when you overcome, and you keep on overcoming, and you overcome till the end of your life, it says to him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which Adam and Eve lost, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. In chapter 2, verse 10, it says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. What you are going to gain is more than what you are going to lose. And the happiness that you are going to have is more than what you are going to suffer. You may suffer for a few years over here. Some little, little persecution. When you get to heaven, tongues cannot tell, ears cannot hear, eyes have not seen. What the Lord has prepared for them that suffer for righteousness. That's why it says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, Satan, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That ye may be tried and tested, and ye shall have tribulation only ten days, just for a limited time. But be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. That means he'll make you a king. That means he'll give you exaltation. He will, he will crown you. And because of the joy that is coming, and he's going to exalt you. And that's the reason he's telling you that there's nothing to fear. And therefore, you don't yield to the devil. Always keep looking unto the Lord. Don't allow anybody to have your loyalty more than the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil will want you to be loyal to him and forsake Jesus Christ. Even some human beings will like you to obey them rather than God. But you keep your loyalty, your faithfulness, your obedience unto the Lord, whatever it will cost you. And then it says at the end of time, you'll have the crown of life. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh, verse 11, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That is, that second death is when people will just be separated from God eternally, forever and ever. And it says, you, if you overcome, you will not uh, have to be separated from God forever and forever. Verse 17, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. This is not the manna they ate in the wilderness. 
Your fathers did eat the manna in the wilderness and they are dead. But I say hidden manna that nobody has, nobody has seen and nobody has eaten. And I will give him the white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth except saving he that receiveth it. It's something that is preserved, something that is special, something that's a peculiar treasure, preserved only for the people that overcome. It says at the end of time, when you have overcome, when you have passed all your tests, all your trials, all your tribulations, when everything is over and you come to the other side victorious and you have not been defeated by the devil, then I'm going to give you that crown of life and I'm going to give you the manna. I'm going to give you the white stone to justify you and to tell you forever and ever you are not qualified to be in the presence of the Lord. In chapter 2 verse 25, but he that that which ye have, hold fast till I come. You see, that's part of how to overcome. You hold fast that which you have until it comes. You have salvation, hold it fast. Uh, there are some ladies that, uh, those of us working in some offices, there are some ladies that will try to uh, present themselves to you. And they say, why don't you give up your salvation? I'll give myself to you. And I don't care whether you want to commit sin or whatever you want to do. I'm available for you. Keep what you have. Keep your salvation. There are some people that want to make a deal with you. They say, well, if we will get into this deal, this will be your share. I will give you this amount of money. They want you to get into fraud. They want you to get into deception. And they want you to steal. Keep your salvation. Let them go with their money. Don't get involved in those things. You keep what you have already until the end. Your sanctification. Your holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's your ticket. That's your passport. That's your visa to heaven. If you lose it, you lose everything. And what shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world, if you have all the money in all the banks of this world and you lose that holiness, what will it profit you? What will you give in exchange for your life? Hold that fast which you have until I come. He that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. He shall rule. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father and I will give him the morning star. What's the morning star? He will give you himself. He said, I am the bright morning star. And Jesus said, if you overcome, I will give you of the tree of life. I will give you manna. I will give you crown. I will give you a rod to rule. I will give you this. In fact, he says, what am I going to give you again? I'll give you myself. I'll give you the bride and the morning star. Oh, it's wonderful to overcome. I pray we will overcome in Jesus' name. In chapter 3, verse 5, look at what he's telling us. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. You know what? Those angels in heaven, they are clothed with white raiment. Blazing white. Dazzling white. And all the redeemed of God in heaven, they are clothed in white. When you get to heaven, you see the righteousness of the saints. Because the pure white linen is the righteousness of the saints. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name. I of the book of life. The Lord was telling, um, he was telling uh, Moses, he said, all those who have sinned against me, Aaron and all the other people that reared up idols and were worshipping idols and they say, Israel, behold, these be your gods that brought you out of the land of Egypt. The people that sin against me, I will blot their names out of the book which I have written. But it says for you, if you keep on overcoming, temptation comes to say no. Those girls come to lead you into sin and say no, no way. And those men came and they want to bribe you and give you money to get you to say, no, I cannot do that. I've come out of that. I'm a child of God. My, my eyes are fixed on heaven. I have another home in view. In view. I have another home in view. My sable has gone to prepare me a place. I have another home in view. That's where I set my affection. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself so that where I am, there ye may be also. That's where my eyes are. And because that's where my eyes are, I don't care what men are trying to give me. I don't want them. He says, those who overcome like that. And stay faithful unto the Lord until then. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He tells us in verse 8, he says, I know thy works. 
Behold, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. He says, even before you get to heaven, here in this world, it will give you doors of opportunity that will open before you. In verse 11, behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast, which thou hast. Hold that fast, which thou hast. How we need that today. Because other churches are trying to put pressure on us in deeper life. They are trying to say, how is it you deeper life people? Don't you see that the world is changing? Don't you see that even those of us who are believing the same things with you 10 years ago, 15 years ago, don't you see that we have changed? I see that we are so dogmatic. I see that you still remain on the same thing. You people, you won't change your dressing. You won't change your conviction. You won't change your doctrine. You won't change your lifestyle. You won't change the way you are doing things. And don't, you, don't you think that it's time to change? No, sir. It's not time to change. Until we see the Lord face to face, this whole Bible will keep to this Bible. We'll stay with this Bible. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Nobody will take my crown. I said nobody will take my crown. I but yours. Will you allow somebody to take your crown? He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. That is, he shall go no more out. And I shall write upon him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God. Which is New Jerusalem. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God. I will write upon him my new name. I pray it will happen to you. He that has an ear to hear. Let him hear what the spirit it says unto the churches in chapter 3 verse 21 to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne think about that will I grant to sit with me in my throne will I grant to sit with me in my throne in this world if, uh, uh, if they elect uh, a president in the country and then you are invited when they want to uh, when they want to swear in that president and then the president recognizes you in the crowd and then he calls says, come and sit by my side here you think that was a great thing but you know that that election is going to be for just a few years and just to be able to sit with about 10 minutes with the president their president elect you say what a great great honor and the photographers will take your photograph and then they show it in all the newspapers but the newspapers is just over here in your country but when that time comes and Jesus Christ sits upon the throne and he says come and sit with me here you say me of all people he said yes because you are faithful because you are standing firm because all the temptations that came all the trials that came all the opposition that came you were standing firm come and sit by my side here and you sit there not for five minutes or ten minutes or one hour one day you sit there forever and ever and it's not only Nigerians or Ghanaians or Africans that will know all the world will see you not only the present world the, from, the, from the foundation of the world until the end of the world all the people will see you they will see you sitting by the side of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be there forever and ever even for that alone even for that alone no matter what it will take we will stand I said we will stand it says, even as I'm set down by my father in his throne, it says, if anybody there has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. I have an ear to hear, I am hearing. And I will stand. I will not allow anything uh, to deceive me or to anything to make me fall. Whatever trial comes, whatever difficulty comes, by the grace of God, in the strength of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, I am going to stand. And I pray you too, you will stand in Jesus Jesus name hey, look at what the Lord is telling us Revelation chapter 21 you see what what the Lord is telling us the gains and the profits of living a righteous holy overcoming conquering life they are so great and eternal I've been reading to you already it talks about the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God it talks about the crown of life and it talks of the escaping from the hurt and the suffering of the second death the eternal separation from God that you will escape the suffering in the lake of fire it talks about the hidden 
manner, feeding on angels food throughout eternity. It talks about the white stone of God's continual eternal approval. It talks about a new name. It talks about power over the nations ruling and reigning with the Lord Jesus Christ in his eternal kingdom. It talks about the morning star giving you the glory of the glorified Christ. It speaks about eternal fellowship with Christ, walking with Christ in white and in heavenly glory and splendor. It talks about Christ recognizing and confessing you in heaven before the heavenly father. It talks of making you a pillar in the temple of our God and it talks of giving you permanent residence like a pillar in the immediate presence of God. It talks about the privilege of sitting with Christ on his throne and now he's going to tell you something. He says you are going to inherit all things. All things. You are going to inherit all things. All things, all things belonging to God all throughout eternity. What a great and glorious eternal future for all overcoming believers that in Christ what we have is worth the effort to pay the price of overcoming the world, overcoming the temptations, overcoming all the easily besetting sins and standing firm, unshakable in the face of the Lord Jesus Christ unto the very end. Look at this, it says, and God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes and there shall be no more death and neither sorrow neither crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away and he that sat on the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done I am alpha I am omega the beginning and the end I will give unto him that the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcometh who is that? That's me. That's me. He that overcome it, that's me. I'm going to overcome. Whatever Satan does, I'm going to overcome. Whatever the devil does, I'm going to overcome. Whatever the, the world may be saying, I'm going to overcome. And you too, you'll overcome in Jesus' name. He that overcome it shall inherit all things. Shall inherit all things. I'm waiting for that day. I'm waiting for that day. When uh, God will give me this, and I'll say, when I feel that, he say, come back, come back, and give me this. When I'm going, he say, come back, give me this. Inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son if you are going to be there rise up and tell the Lord I'm going to be an overcomer nothing will stop me I will be an overcomer nothing will stop me I will overcome temptation I'll overcome the world I'll overcome sin I'll overcome the flesh I'll overcome the devil I'll overcome all the opposers I'll overcome false prophets I'll overcome all the bad bad invitation they are trying to give me come here come there come here come there I'm going to overcome if you overcome you will inherit all things glorious day it will be. Wonderful day it will be. I'm pleading with you that you get the power of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord and the fire of the spirit upon your soul so you will be an overcomer. If you are an overcomer we'll meet on the other side.